Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, August 5th, 2013, and here are our top stories. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, the scare tactics roll out from the Al-Qaeda cheering section. Al-Qaeda is in many ways stronger than it was before 9-11 because it's mutated and it's spread. Plus, John Boehner lends a helping hand on the Benghazi cover-up. Then, smart meter activism with Dr. Laura Presley. All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, the government and the mainstream media are coming out with even more admissions about the crimes that happened in Benghazi as well as the NSA's crimes. But of course, they're all okay because they're doing it to protect us. Yes, they're telling us that a worldwide scare actually vindicates the NSA actions, that somehow we need the Stasi security state. In an article from InfoWars, U.S. extends embassy closings Warnings renew debate over NSA data collection. We learn that now the government has told us that even though they knew when these attacks were going to happen, they were going to happen yesterday, they didn't know exactly where. So they had to close embassies all over the world. Now they're telling us they're not really sure when those attacks are going to occur, so now they're extending it. But that doesn't stop the military industrial complex from putting out their usual puppets and cheerleaders for military spending and for the security and police state. Here's some quotes from some of them. If you're an ordinary American, looks pretty scary. It is scary. Al Qaeda's on the rise in uh, this part of the world, and the NSA program uh, is proving its worth yet again. After Benghazi, they're on steroids. They attacked our consulate. They killed an ambassador a year has passed, and nobody's paid a price. After Benghazi, uh, these al-Qaeda types are really on steroids, uh, thinking we're weaker and they're stronger. So specific as to how uh, enormous it was going to be, and also the certain uh, dates were given, uh, but it didn't specify where it's going to be. And, you know, the assumption is uh, that it, it's probably most likely to happen uh, in the Middle East uh, at or about one of the embassies, but there's no guarantee of that at all. It could basically could be in Europe, it could be in the United States, it could be a series of combined attacks. <laughs> Al-Qaeda is in many ways stronger than it was before 9-11 because it's mutated and it's spread. Well, the one thing that we can talk about, uh, David, is the fact that there's been an awful lot of chatter out there. Chatter means conversation among terrorists about uh, the planning that's going on. Some individuals who are making plans, such as we saw before 9-11. Yeah, they're making plans like they did before 9-11. And, of course, we know who were behind some of those plans. And it wasn't just al-Qaeda, the government-created terrorist organization. And why are they on steroids? Well, they're on steroids because we are arming them. We have created this boogeyman, and we're putting it on steroids. We're the ones injecting them with steroids. That was what Benghazi was all about. And yet, this is what the mainstream media is telling us. This is what the government puppets for the military-industrial complex are telling us, that it's all okay. It's all vindicated now because they discovered some vague threat. They don't know exactly where it's going to be, and now they tell us they don't know when it's going to be, but... They, do, they know it's a real threat, and it's very serious. It's summed up really pretty well by NPR, which, of course, is a government news outlet. And this is what they said on Monday's NPR show. They said that after weeks of debate on Capitol Hill about whether national security agency surveillance programs should be curbed, debate sparked by the secrets spilled by NSA leaker Edward Snowden, now the subject has changed 180 degrees to a discussion of how effective the programs may be. You see, Lindsey Graham wastes no time in telling us how the NSA programs have been vindicated now because they've discovered some mythical threat. I guess when Hitler rolled out his military and showed us all of his planes and tanks, we should have all just fallen down and said, it's, uh, it's too scary. We're not going to fight that. You know, people have lost their lives in this country fighting for the freedoms that we enjoy, or at least we thought we had enjoyed, and that are being robbed from us on a daily basis by our government. And yet we're supposed to just give all of that up because they promise that they're gonna keep us secure. Well, they're pushing a phony paradigm. You are not going to get more secure if you give up your liberties. You're going to be going into the slavery of a police and surveillance state. Now here's the case against what these people are pushing. 
And an article from InfoWars says, is the government exaggerating the threat of terror for political reasons? And we have a quote here from former Secretary of Homeland Security, Tom Ridge. He admitted that he was pressured to raise terror alerts to help Bush win re-election. And the threat from al-Qaeda, while real, has been greatly exaggerated. Former U.S. National Security Advisor Zbigniew Brzezinski, who is also a top foreign policy advisor to President Obama, told the Senate that the war on terror is a mythical historical narrative. And yet we see that uh, even still, we see that the U.S. government is in turmoil over a, quote, big new al-Qaeda plot, the biggest thing we've seen since 9-11. And yet, at the same time, Obama is funding them. In another InfoWars article from Anthony Gucciardi, he points out that Obama even initiated the large-scale arming of al-Qaeda-linked Syrian rebels through a, quote, secret order, unquote. And that was reported by mainstream news outlet Reuters back in 2012. See, that's the why of all this. The why of all this is the arming of al-Qaeda that was being done by the CIA, the fighting going on within the government, within the CIA. That was what Benghazi was all about. So Benghazi and the NSA all comes full circle as we see in this news today. And yet we see Pat Cadell on Fox News talking about how John Boehner, aided Obama in covering up Benghazi. See, it's not just the Democrats. It's not just people covering up for Obama. And these problems are not going to go away if Obama is removed from office. He should be removed from office. He's committed high crimes and treason. But they're not going to go away because Republicans are involved in this as well. In this article, we learned past, uh, pollster Pat Cadell charged Republican Speaker of the House John Boehner of aiding the Obama administration in its cover-up of the Benghazi scandal, claiming that Boehner knew about weapons being smuggled out of Libya and into the hands of Syrian rebels by the CIA. He said, we have John Boehner who's purposely suppressing anything on Benghazi because he knew what we found out this week. No, we didn't find it out this week. We found it out much earlier than that. And he had approved it. These sales he had approved, these CIA teams on the ground which were sending weapons from Libya through Turkey to Syrian rebels without congressional approval, said Pat Cadell. The notion that arms, including surface-to-air missiles, were being sent from Benghazi to militants and terrorists in Syria was voiced as far back as last November by Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer during an appearance on the Alex Jones show. Yes, this is not something that we're just learning. The mainstream media, as well as most in government, just like John Boehner, he's not the only one doing this. These are people, both parties have been covering this up from the very beginning, because from the very beginning, we had people like Colonel Tony Schaefer, as well as Wayne Madsen, as well as Colonel, as uh, Dr. Steve Pachenik, telling us exactly what is now coming out. And Alex spent a lot of time talking to Wayne Madsen yesterday on the radio show, and here's an excerpt of that. Now in hindsight, and now as you've been proven absolutely accurate, uh, what happened here? What is your latest intel? What are your sources saying? Well, I, it's what I said originally. I think there were a lot of things at, at play in Benghazi. Uh, I think, yes, I think uh, uh, the U.S. had supplied weapons to the Libyan rebels, and then obviously when the Syria thing uh, happened. Uh, they wanted to transfer not only weapons, but some of these uh, Islamist fighters uh, from the Libyan campaign to the Syrian campaign. And obviously, uh, 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 Stevens, the ambassador, was a part of this. The other thing, this wasn't a U.S., really a U.S. embassy operation in Benghazi. It was a CIA station. So after covering up what happened, actually happened in Benghazi for months, now the government is trying to use that to scare us, to create a phony worldwide terror alert. And we have a quote from Pericles, which really addresses that. He says, freedom is a sure possession of those alone who have the courage to defend it. We have to have the courage to take the risks that come with freedom and not be scared into this phony paradigm thinking that we're going to get security if we give up our liberty. That's not going to happen. We're going to get slavery, and they're trying to use this worldwide threat to scare us, to distract us from their crimes. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. 
Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the New Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow, uh, plum trees, grape trees, they will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices we bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden, for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden, that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit Lovers, with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing.